In our last video, we saw this very important theorem that Borel measures satisfy it. Now let's actually prove that these measures satisfy it. So I will first prove that mu of e for e in the sigma algebra m can be written as the infimum of the measures of open sets that cover our set. And one of the things that we learned in the last video was that we could write the measure of a set E in the sigma algebra M as this infimum of the sum of the measures of open intervals A sub J, B sub J. So we will prove the theorem using this definition of the measure. Now it's an infimum, so what does that mean? Well, it means that given epsilon greater to zero, there exists a sequence of, in this case, as we had here, open intervals that cover our set, then we will have that same thing. So, A sub J, B sub J, a sequence of those open intervals, such that two things happen. First of all, E is a subset of the union from j equals 1 up to infinity of these intervals. And second, because it is the infimum, the measure of e is the infimum, then the measure of e is when we subtract this number epsilon is less than or equal to the sum of these measures. What this is telling us, if you don't already know the definition of an infimum, is that I like to picture it like this. We have the infimum here, and the infimum is actually the measure of E, because that is what the formula we have above is telling us. So this thing right here, this number, is the measure of E. And what we're doing here is taking this infimum and subtracting epsilon. So here we will have the measure of E minus epsilon. And the definition of an infimum says, well, whenever you move a little bit towards the left, then immediately another one of the competitors in your definition of the infimum, so here it would be another one of these sets that cover E, will appear and it will appear here, in the middle. So here we will have this sum of the measures a sub j, b sub j. So mu of e minus epsilon is less than or equal to this competitor that appear as soon as we subtracted epsilon. And so what we will do is, let's call this union, let's call it u, okay? So now u is an open set, and obviously because of what we have here, E is a subset of U. The measure of U, U is the union, so it's the measure of the union from J equals 1 to infinity of the intervals. Now mu is a measure, and this sequence of sets is not necessarily disjoint. So because of the monotonicity that mu satisfies, this is less than or equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to infinity of the measures of a sub j and b sub j. And now the sum of these measures is less than or equal to the measure of e plus epsilon. And so again, using the definition of an infimum, it is telling us that the measure of E is the infimum over the measures of the sets U, such that U is open and E is a subset of U. So that's great, that proves the first thing. Now we have to prove the second one. And the proof for the second one is actually quite long and a bit more tedious, but if you stay with me, then you will learn a lot of tools because we will be working a lot with the definition of a supremum 
and with a few concepts of topology. So it's very useful to really understand this proof because it will give us tools to use later on in exercises or whenever we want to prove something else. So we have to prove that the measure of E is now a supremum over subsets of E that are compact, or the measure of those subsets. So we will divide the proof into two parts. First, we will suppose that E is bounded. Now, if E is bounded, we have two options. If E is closed, then E is compact because we are in the real number and in the real numbers bounded and closed implied the set to be compact and so with this then we have finished we have the proof so what happens now when E is not closed and now we will use what we just proved so given epsilon there exists U open set, but we will use this definition not on E, but on another set, and it's this one. U will be a superset of the closure of E minus E. So we are using the theorem which has proved the first part on this set, the closure of E minus the set E. And so what that this satisfies the definition of an infimum that the measure of u is less than or equal to the measure of the closure of e minus e plus the epsilon I just grabbed. And we will define a set k. We will take k to be the closure of e minus this open set u. From the definition of this operation between sets, we know that this is equal to the closure of E intersection U complement. Now, U was an open set, so U complement is closed. And the closure of E is always closed. So with this, we have that K is a closed set because it's just the intersection of two closed sets. Now, K is the closure of E intersection something else. So, in particular, it is a subset of the closure of E. And, as we said, E is bounded. So, because E is bounded, then obviously the closure of E will also be bounded. And if the closure of E is bounded, K is also bounded. So K is closed and bounded. So these three things tell us that K is compact. So let's see that K is a subset of E. Because K is defined in this very weird way, we know nothing about it. So let's actually prove that it's a subset of E. Well, what is K? We said that it was the closure of E intersection U complement. And now we can remember something. Remember that the closure of E minus E was a subset of U. This we have it from here. And so when we apply complements, we get that U complement is a subset of the closure of E minus E complement. And from this, we get that U complement is a subset of this, and therefore this wall will be a subset of E bar intersection the closure of E minus E complement. And now we can use the definition of this operation and say that this set will be equal to well, we have the closure intersection and inside these brackets the definition of E bar minus E is E bar 
intersection E complement. And now we have some, an intersection complement and we can use the Morgan's law. So this all will be E bar intersection E bar complement union E complement complement that's equal to E. And now we can just remove these brackets and associate this like this. And we have E closure intersection E closure complement. Well, this is obviously the empty set union E. So this is equal obviously to E. And we have that K is a subset of E. So we have that K is compact and it's a subset of E. Now what we would like to do is try to estimate the measure of K. But for this, I'm going to do more calculations to understand this set K a little bit better. As I said before, K is equal to E bar minus U. And this is equal to E intersection E bar, sorry, intersection U complement. And now let's see another way that we can write the closure of a set. Well, very easily actually, we can write it as E closure minus E, so we subtract E and then we add it again. It's like adding zero. And we have intersection U complement. I can rewrite this as E closure minus E intersection U complement. I'm distributing union E intersection U complement is the distributive law. Now this set is the empty set because E closure minus E was a subset of U. So if I'm intersecting it with the complement, it's obviously the empty set. So we have that K is equal to E intersection U complement. But again, what does this mean? Well, this is equal to E minus U. And I can rewrite this as E minus E intersection u because when I subtract u from e the part that I'm actually subtracting is the intersection so this is a trivial inequality okay so this gives us we started from k and we have then that k is equal to e minus e intersection u and I'm gonna use this equality to calculate the measure of k so what is the measure of k? Well, it's obviously the measure of e minus e intersection u. And I can write this as mu of e minus the measure of e intersection u, because this is a subset of e. And now I will use that e intersection u can be written in a very complicated way as u minus u minus e. If you don't believe me, then just do the math. It's a double inclusion. It's not very hard, or you can just try and draw a Venn diagram to, to believe it. So here, instead of having the measure of e intersection u, I'm going to have all the rest the same and the measure of u minus u minus e. And now again I have that u minus e is a subset of u and so I can write this as a subtraction so I will get mu of e minus mu of u and here I would have minus mu of u minus e with this other minus it is then a plus. And now I will use that E bar minus E is a subset of U minus E. So then the measure 
of u minus e is greater than or equal to the measure of e bar minus e. So this is greater than or equal to. The rest remains the same. mu bar minus e. And here we have greater than or equal to. But if we go back, we have minus the measure of u plus the measure of e bar minus e. So if we go back to the beginning, we find that mu of e bar minus e minus this measure of u will give us minus epsilon, moving epsilon to the other side. It would be greater than or equal to minus epsilon. So I can use this down here and from this, from what we have above, I will say that this is greater than or equal to the measure of e minus epsilon. And so I found that given an epsilon, I was able to find a set k compact such that the measure of k is the measure of e minus epsilon. And k was a subset of e, so this tells us that the measure of e will be the supremum we are looking for. And this is great, but we are still under the assumption of e being bounded. So what happens if e is not bounded? I know it, this is very long, I, I know. What we will do is define a family of sets, E sub j, as E intersection j, j plus 1, because remember we are with a real number. I'm gonna consider here the interval closed for j an integer. Okay, so obviously the sets E sub j's are bounded and the family of these sets is disjoint. Also, the sum over all the integers of the sets E sub j give us the set E because it would be E intersection minus infinity infinity and that is obviously E. So we have these properties for our family of sets. And now, because they are bounded, I can use what I just proved above and say that for some given epsilon, there will exist, for each of these sets E sub j, there will exist a compact set K sub j such that this K sub j is a subset of E sub j and it satisfies the thing with the supremum so that means that the measure of k sub j is greater than or equal to the measure of e sub j plus and here instead of writing epsilon because I'm eventually going to add all these sets up because of this property I'm gonna write 2 to the minus absolute value of j epsilon. And this is just so that calculations are nice and when I add everything up, this 2 to the minus j adds up to 1 and I will eventually get mu of e plus epsilon. But we could actually say epsilon and everything would be fine. And now we will define the set that we actually want as a candidate for the compact set subset of E. We'll define a set H sub n as the union from j equals minus n to n, so it's a finite union, of the sets k sub j. The k sub j's were compact, so H sub n is a finite union of compact sets. We get that H sub n is compact. Because the case of j's are subsets of e sub j's and e sub j's are subsets of e, we have that h sub n is also a subset of e. So we have a compact, a subset of e, 
we now have to calculate the measure. This, by the way, happens for any number, natural. So let's start by calculating the measure of the union from j equals minus n up to n of the sets E sub j. Now, as I said before, in here, these sets are disjoint. So the measure of the union is equal to the sum of the measures. But now we know that the measure of E sub j is less than or equal to the measure of K sub j minus 2 to the minus j epsilon. So from this, we get that this is less than or equal to the sum from j equals minus n up to n of the measures of k sub j minus 2 to the mi minus absolute value of j epsilon. But the sum of the k sub j's is equal to the measure of the union and the union is h sub n minus when we add all this up the 2 to the minus j the sum will give us 1 and that gives us epsilon so let's see what we have we have that the union of these of j's is an increasing sequence of sets that increases to e and so using the continuity for the measure we get that the measure of e will be the limit when n tends to infinity of the measures of the unions of E sub j's. And this measure of the union, as we said, is less than or equal to, we keep the limit, the measure of h sub n plus epsilon. But now h sub n here is a subset of E. So we know that the measure of h sub n is less than or equal to the measure of e. So then from these two things, what we get is that the measure of e is equal to the limit when n tends to infinity of the measure of h sub n. So now let's use the definition of a limit. What does it mean for some number to be equal to the limit of another one? Well, it means that for any epsilon greater to zero, it has to be different from the other one. So I'm taking a new epsilon. There exists a natural number n sub zero such that the measure of e minus the measure of h sub n0 is less than epsilon. And remember, this h sub n0 is compact and is also a subset of e. We were able to write the definition here of the supremum. And therefore we have, after some hard work, we have our theorem.